Hi, Rick Roslin here, and welcome back to another live YouTube video of my science programs. I'm here in my basement at home today, and I thought we'd do a pretty cool project called indoor model flying, or indoor model airplanes. And so I use these a lot in fourth grade, but I've used them with all ages of kids, and it helps us understand how things fly, and if you make a model airplane, then you can be an aviator. And we're going to uh, actually make a pretty cool plane today. And I will tell you that uh, there's a lot more lessons on my YouTube channel, Rick Crossland Science. If you type in model airplanes or FPG-9 or flight, you will find a lot of more lessons. But we're going to do a short little lesson today. So let's get started. Now, I will start off by saying uh, I don't have the things I usually do to make model airplanes. But that's okay because you can make planes out of about anything. Paper is a big... Uh, uh, kind of a, a thing a lot of people use, and I usually use foam plates. But today, uh, I don't have any foam plates, and so let me show you what we're gonna be using today. Today, we're gonna be using paper plates. And so if you have a paper plate, some tape, maybe some paper, some scissors, a couple pennies, you should have everything you need. So the first thing, uh, this makes it even more interesting today because we're gonna be doing what's called a design process. The design process. Now when I say design process, and there goes my bird. <laughs> I thought I'd bring my bird out today since, uh, let me get this guy, here we go. There's my bird since uh, people like Leonardo da Vinci studied birds to see how they could fly. But I think my friend here, hopefully he'll stay here. I'll have to put him away. Get back up here on, that, on your perch there. So the design process is pretty simple. First, we have a problem. After you work out the problem, the next part is research. And you can use the internet or you can talk to people. The third thing you want to do is, after you've done, looked at your problem, did your research, you want to build a prototype. Proto, that's a new word. Prototype. A prototype is something that you can then, <laughs> this is the fun part, test it. Almost everything in your house, your car that you wear, someone built a prototype, tested it, and it probably wasn't perfect the first time they did it. You remember when you made a, a fort in the front room with your blankets and, uh, and climbed in it, and probably the first thing that happened when you built that prototype is that fort fell down. <laughs> so you probably then went back and you fixed it, or you changed it. You either fixed it or changed it to make it better. And then finally, I bet you tested it again. Now this testing and fixing and testing and fixing and testing and fixing goes on and on and on until finally when you're done, you can communicate. That means tell somebody about it communicate your idea. And that is the design process that we're gonna to use today. So, the design process, we use it all the time. It's a pretty cool process. You've probably used it. I'd like to show you uh, over here, one of my groups that I work with, it's called the Academy of Model Aeronautics, the AMA. And their website, uh, Academy of Model Aeronautics, is pretty cool, they have a, uh, they actually have a website called Flight School, and Flight School is all about making models and flying them. I even have a bunch of, of demos there. Uh, there's me with uh, Educator Toolkit. So check out the AMA, Academy of Model Aeronautics. They're actually, their international national headquarters is in Muncie, Indiana. And uh, it's a great place to visit, but it's a great place to go online and learn more about models. Now let me show you what we're gonna be making today. What we're gonna be making today is one of my favorite models and it's called the FPG-9. The FPG-9 and it stands for Foam Plate Glider 9 inch. Now <laughs> the problem with, uh, uh, with our model today is I don't have any foam plates. Years ago I used to make these with egg cartons and that was hard to do also. So today I thought, you know what, I'm going to use the design process. And my criteria, which is part of the design process, is that, hey, I don't have a foam plate. I'm going to see if it will work with uh, 
this type of plate right here. And I think it will. In fact, let's find out. So we're going to use this model to make our FPG9. I'm going to have to change it, though. I think I'm going to call it the PPG9, the paper plate glider. But before I do that, let me show you just a little bit about flight. Okay, so we have an airplane right here. Here's an airplane, all right? This airplane has a fuselage. Okay, now this airplane, there are two sets of opposing forces. First of all, this plane wants to go this way, but it's also is being held back by this way. So this is drag as it moves through the air, and this is thrust as the engine pushes it that way. But that's only one of the opposite forces. The other force is gravity wants it to come back to Earth. So the opposing force of gravity, of course, is lift. So these are the four forces that have to do with the motion of an airplane flying. Now the Wright brothers studied this and they were one of the first to ever make a plane fly. And it had to have several things. In order for it to fly, the Wright brothers, and this is kind of interesting to me because one of them was born right here in Indiana. The Wright brothers wanted, the criteria for their prototype is first of all, it had to be heavier than air. It couldn't be a balloon. It had to take off from the ground. It couldn't just go off a cliff. It had to be powered and it had to have a pilot. And the last and most important and probably the hardest thing, it had to have control. And we're gonna learn about the three ways you control an airplane with a model we're gonna make. In fact, we're gonna follow in the footsteps of the Wright brothers to make a plane that we can control. Now, <laughs> birds, they know how to control. And it was Leonardo da Vinci that studied birds and their hollow wings and how they could move their wings. But uh, we're gonna have to do it a different way and we're gonna follow a design process, here we go, that has to do with these different things. Now, let's start here with our paper plate. And hopefully, here we go. Now. One thing I know about any airplane that you want to uh, use, you want to make sure that whatever design you make, it's probably a good idea if it's balanced. If I made a one wing too big and, or one wing too small, that would probably be a problem. So well, the first thing I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, but like I said, try it. I want to find the middle of my plane. So that looks pretty good, pretty good. And for this one, I'm going to make a little thing about right there. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to make my wing go across here about like this. Like I said, I've never made one like this until today. Put that across there. And I'm trying to mark out some wings to see how that's going to go. I don't know. We'll see how it works. I'm going to come down. Here's going to be my wing on my <laughs> PP. Now, if you have a foam plate, you might try that. All right. Let's try this first part here. So I'm going to cut this out. I got two wings going. I'm going to come over here so you can see this. And there's a lot of videos that show how to do this. So I'm going to cut this down like this. Try to keep everything even. I'll show you what we're going to use that for in just a second. Come on down a little bit more. And now I'm going to cut this wing. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I think it's important. I've cut that on that side. I should make this one cut on this side. I don't expect the first one you make to be perfect. That's why it is the design process. All right, so there is our front of our plane. And if you watch the videos, you can learn a lot about the leading edge, the trailing edge. Let's come back here now and make this even. Make it a little bit bigger, right about there. You can see I'm making my two wings and one right about here. Okay. So I've got the start of my plane right here, and I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, you know what, this side looks a little bit fatter. I wonder if that'll affect my design. So I'm going to, before I go much further, I'm gonna cut this and try to make it symmetrical or even, so each side is like that, okay. Hmm, put that over to the side. Now, 
in our design, I want to cut out the middle right here to hook to put in my elevator and my tail section. So I push that little piece out right there. Can you see how I cut that out? I might make that even a little bit deeper. And like I said, there's other videos I have on my channel that shows how to make this a lot quicker. All right, so there we go. Hmm, pretty interesting. But I need a tail, so I'm gonna lay this piece down right here. Just like a shark, I'm gonna make me a, a tail for my FPG-9. Probably right about there. So the Wright brothers, the first thing they uh, worked with was kites and then gliders, and they learned how to control up and down and next, and we'll talk about those three ways to control in just a second here. All right, so here we go, here's a tail. I'm gonna cut a little slot. A slot is when I take the paper away. So now I have a slot and I can fit this right in here. And by fitting it in there, I now have a tail for my plane. That's pretty cool. All right, before I go much further, I do a couple things. Number one, I'm used to doing this with lots of kids, so the one thing I wanna do is put my name on it, Rick. And I usually write FPG9 because I'm using foam, but today I'm gonna to put PPG9. Paper plate glider, nine inches. Make sure that's right, nine inches across. Yep, PPG. Now in order to follow the Wright brothers, <laughs> we need a pilot. And I like to use my friend, Abraham Lincoln. And I use him for two reasons. Number one, he's cheap, he'll fly for one cent. And number two, his head's made out of copper, so he doesn't have to wear a helmet. We don't want anybody crashing. So the first thing you do is you put him right here in the middle. Do you think it's important that I get him right exactly in the middle? Let's see, so you can see a little bit better. Got him right there in the middle. And I put his seatbelt on. Here's his seatbelt, a piece of tape. All right, that makes that end heavier. You wanna get fancy, we can even call that a gravity gradient or more mass, it puts uh, the front of it as our leading edge. Now we also need to close the cockpit. Remember that little piece at the top right here? This actually helps that the pilot when it crashes doesn't go flying out. So one piece of tape as the seat belt, the other piece of tape as the cockpit, close it up, tape it down, and now we have the start of our glider. I'm looking at it and I'm looking, let's see. I don't like how that bump is right there. See how that's sticking up right there? I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit better like that. I like that a little bit better. The thing about model airplanes, a small change will have a big effect. So small changes, and you really wanna keep track of any changes you make. All right, now it's time to put the tail in. So I'm gonna, uh, easily do that. I'm going to slide it in. You can put it that way or you can put it that way. I'm going to put it with the most of it sticking up. Now you know I need four pieces of tape for this. Eat the first time. Lay it flat. Put a piece of tape on it. Flip it over. Put a piece of tape on it. Lift it up. Now it'll stay in place but it goes back and forth. Turn it over. Push it down one more time. The first three are pretty easy. Put a piece of tape on it. Now this next one, you want to move this so that the tail is perpendicular. That means 90 degree angle. See how they are in right there? And I'm uh, my bird is studying me and the bird's learning something about this. So I got one more piece of tape and I need to put it right here to keep this. So this is the tricky part. And I've had kids as little as, well, my Rowie, my granddaughter, when she she's four and a half now, but when she was three, she could fly this plane and make it too. We made it together and she could decorate it. So here's my FPG-9, ready to fly. Now, this does not have control surfaces. So let me show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, and I'm going to mark first a control surface. That means I'm going to put a little line right here and right about there. I'm gonna cut those. Those are gonna be my elevons. That's a fancy French word for a control service. There's another one right there. 
I'm going to cut those two. And then back here, I'm going to cut one here and here. Okay, I marked them. Now you can see all this uh, on, the, uh, on the lesson plan over there. Okay, I'm going to cut it. Boom. And cut one and cut two. I'm going to cut this one just a little bit and two. And hopefully I did these even and two. Now, this can move up and down, up and down. See how that moves up and down? Elevons. Here's another one right here, up and down. Elevons. Because it's a glider you can just throw, but you don't know where it's going to go. It's definitely a free flight, but <laughs> I think we want to control these. So here's my my rudder that I can make go this way or that way. I'm going to keep them all straight at first, okay? Keeping them straight is the best way to do it at first. And so let's check this out. Let me show you. Uh, here's, uh, here's what it looks like again on um, in the video. There's my design and where to cut. Uh, this was made by Jack Reynolds, this design. Uh, he did this for his grandson, as the story goes. And let's see how this guy goes. So let me let me turn this back around and let's see what we got going on here. All right, so I have made my FPG-9. Well, actually, we have to call this a PPG-9, paper plate glider. So let's talk about the three ways that an airplane can move. The first is called pitch, pitch up, pitch down. When you're in an airplane, it takes off, it pitches up or pitches down. That's called pitch. And it's these elevons that can control that. They act like little bitty levers on the back. So if you push them up, the air going across the wing hits it and causes the nose to come up. If you push them down, the air underneath causes it to pitch down. So our first one is pitch up, pitch down. Now the third one a plane can do, and this is also named after boating, a boat will pitch up and down in the waves, is roll. You can roll to the right and roll to the left. One elevon up, one elevon down. And then the third way is called yaw. If you're going straight, this is the last one that the Wright brothers worked out because they were getting control. They could do roll, they could do pitch by putting a little uh, elevator in the front of their plane. And then, then they ran into trouble because every once in a while the plane would just turn sideways and dive. And they figured out that if you added another control surface straight up from the wing, you could control yaw. So let's say them again. So first of all, there's pitch up, pitch down, roll, roll, and my favorite yaw. All right. So I don't know how our plane flies. There's only one way to find out. Let's see. Uh, and I got I made another one a moment ago before I uh, came online. So let's see. Uh, let me get over here and get this. Uh, let me see if I can switch my my uh, camera real quick here and we'll do a couple flights to see how this goes all right here we go so I got this one I'm setting up right here and you talk about uh, uh, they say that necessity is the mother of invention so I uh, didn't have foam plates today but I do have some paper plates all right so let's take a look at these here we go so once again pitch up pitch down roll roll let's try to see what happens when I fly this first plane ready one, two, three. I got all. I've got all my control surfaces flat. I don't want to change them yet because I don't know how it's going to fly. Let's see. Ready? Oh, I don't know if you saw that. It pitched up and went down. Let me try this guy right here and see how he goes. One, two, three. That was pretty good. That one went right at the plane. Let's let's try flying it in this other direction. So here's the one I made that you saw me make. Let's see how it goes if I fly. Here we go. Ready? Wow, that one kind of rolled to the side. And then this guy, that one had a nice smooth. So as I hurried and made this one, I wonder if it makes a difference on the design process if it's not even, if one side's heavier. Hmm, I bet it does. So I'll probably go back and do some cutting, try to make it even. Now this guy, let's do, let's have some fun with this one. Wonder what would happen if I put the elevons up like that. Check that one out. So there's one elevon up and one elevon up. So when this plane goes through the air now, the air is going to hit the back and lift the nose up. It might pitch up. It might do a loop. I don't know. 
Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. Wow, it kind of went on down and did a curve. So, hey, have some fun today. Make, if you have a foam plate, make an FPG9. If you don't have a foam plate, improvise. Use your design process. Make a PPG9, a paper plate glider, nine inches. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next time. There's plenty, I have over 300 videos online and a bunch about flight and the AMA and the FPG-9. Remember, you're an aviator when you make, test, and fly a model airplane. See you next time.